Hi everyone, I hope you're well. I wasn't intending to film anything in August. Today is Monday the 8th of August and I actually have enough videos, um, one video per week to last until September when school starts again. Um, but I really, really miss being in my studio and spending time with my paints and just being creative drawing and painting and just you know do something that has to do with color uh, or texture or anything <laughs> for that matter so i thought i will film a little kind of like a catch-up slash delayed um july favorites um maybe vloggy catch-up-y thing um so I'll start with um, sharing my July favorites and today I do it a little bit different. I'll just show you uh, the items. I think they're not going to be that much and I'll show you uh, what I use them in purely because most of July I have been sick with a flu. God knows what it was but I tested myself three times. It was not COVID or at least the test didn't pick up COVID um, and I tested myself at different um, points so at the beginning with the symptoms starting then I think I did day five and then I did like week two or something where it actually got quite quite a lot worse um, so anyways, I don't know what it was, but it was a very bad cough. I was feeling very, very poorly, like bad ridden poorly. So naturally, you know, July was was a month that uh, was not very creative for me. I just didn't have the energy. Um, yeah, I'm still actually left with a little bit of a broken voice. It affected my voice chords quite a bit, that one. Yeah, so let's start with things that um, I have enjoyed. I think towards the end of July, I started um, trying to do a little bit of sketching or illustrating or something like that. So I'll, I'll share those bits and pieces. And I think it will go kind of like end of July merging into beginning of um, August, but we'll we'll take it as the July's favorite um, favorites. And then the other thing I wanted to do, yeah, just like a little catch up around my studio. I'll mention about this painting because I think um, some of you are probably curious what actually happened to this painting. Have I finished? Clearly I have not. <laughs> and I just wanted to update you on what's going on. So. Firstly, uh, let's talk about the July uh, favorites. So I think in June I have discovered this Bleed Proof White by Dr. P.H. Martins and I actually have really enjoyed using it with a fine brush. The brush I'm using it with is a 3-0 Princeton, but basically any brush that has a fine tip, but not too short, do you want it to kind of... I haven't tried it with one of my longer um, tips. I'm trying to see if I have any examples here. So like a liner brush and see how that would work as opposed to, uh, you know, like longer bristles um, versus the shorter ones whether that would be anyhow different and how the flow would be but what I did um, is one of the examples I think I've done it a few times now but I'll just show you in this example right here so you can see I've created some bubbly things and yeah so that was good fun now in terms of colors i have really enjoyed these two and i purchased them i think in june as well this is the chinese orange and um hold on a sec and asa green is that right oh almost dropped it yes an Asa green by m graham so i really enjoyed those two colors oh and where is this one mind you i need to find it so my favorites have been this color here and this color but i also now realized 
I have a tube of this colour somewhere. And I really enjoy that too. So, let me try and find it. So that one was also Sanilia and it was bright yellow green that I'm trying to find. It's definitely not here. Hmm. Anyway, I'm sure I'll find it somewhere. It's just hiding at the moment. Um, then the other thing, I'll show you actually a couple of things that I have been doing. So let's start with the one that I just showed you. I have recently discovered a mix where you mix um, cerulean blue with sepia and this is probably not the best example because it's supposed to be a very lovely and granulating mix of two colors <clears throat> but uh, yeah the paper isn't made for this so if you wonder there's the back of the sketchbook um, this paper is definitely not designed for um, showing off watercolor granulation. Um, so anyway, I tried it and I actually quite like the color that mixed here, even though it's not as granulating as I would have loved it. This was just a little spread. I actually did it last night, went into my studio. I had this itching kind of desire to just slap some paint onto paper and just play around a little bit with it so that's what I've done I first mixed up this color deepened it a little bit so I didn't really fancy how washed out these were so then I deepened it a bit with the sepia and so more of the sepia and more of the cerulean blue hue so these are both by Schminke sepia brown and cerulean blue hue but you can find any other cerulean blue and a sepia that you have doesn't matter which brand it is and just um, have a little go I'll, and then I used some of this a bleed proof like I said to create some texture a couple of pencils one of them was the saffron um, where is it I think it's this one here yes yeah, saffron uh, Museum Aquarelle by Karen Dash. It's a water, I'm trying to hide behind my pencil. It's a watercolor pencil. And then I also used light cobalt blue, which is also by, no, that's a luminance one. So it's this one here. And I thought the color combo is quite nice. Like that. And then the next thing I did, I used Titan Buff and Titan Mars Pale by Golden, both heavy body. And I just used this. Actually, I should put that as a favorite for July. And just love how you can create a texture because it's a little bit kind of rubberized and flexible it's a different experience than working with a palette knife palette knife just gives you sometimes too harsh effects and although i love working with palette knife i preferred the softness that you can create with this lovely tool also feels very nice in your hand if you're one of those people that like this kind of sensation of holding something um that feels good definitely would recommend this one so it's the Catalyst W06 it says on here, but I'll try to link it down below for your convenience um, All right, so yeah, really enjoy that. So so far. What do we have in the favorites? We had these two watercolors We had the bleed proof we had the catalyst and Now we're moving on to the next thing which I mentioned this brush in last haul that I did. It's the Oval Mop by Princeton and it's a three quarter inch brush. Now I bought it because I was taking a course a while ago and the artist used this brush and I thought, well, it probably is way too much, too big for me because it's just, it's going to hold too much water. And normally 
I work on smaller um, sizes so you know this brush is great for big canvases or big sizes of paper so you can actually uh, work with it freer and looser but I really really liked what the artist created and I was buying this brush with the intention of working on a large scale um, paper so um, I wasn't able to try it in the last video but I have tried it since and I know some of you really wanted to know my opinion on it so I've tried it on this paper Etcher. The review for this blog is coming soon. I have been sent this by Etcher to try. It's their watercolor blog. High quality, acid free, 50% cotton, 300 GSM cold press, vegan friendly. And this particular orientation is a square, which is uh, 20.3 centimeters or 8 inches. And you get 20 sheets in there. The block is not your usual block because it is not sealed on this side. So if you're looking at the block like that, it's not sealed here and it's not sealed there. Where it is sealed is obviously where the papers are attached to one another and it is sealed at the bottom as well. So it's just um, sealed like, you know, 50% of, of the um, paper. Um, but... I have used this brush and I've used uh, the, which one was it, the FW um, acrylic ink with loads of water as you can imagine and this is what I created and I really liked the feeling of this brush even though I was working on not a so big space. Um, it really felt like I could go ahead and do loose and more kind of organic shapes with it um, as a comparison I'll show you the brush I would normally work with is this one so this is a Raven Jackson's 3.0 and you know I would still be able to achieve kind of watery effects with it but it just wouldn't be as moppy and as soft as this one someone left a comment saying that they uh, struggled using this brush that the water was repelling from the bristles and the only reason why I can see uh, this happening because these brushes are really good quality the Princeton and Velvet Touch they're like they're, they're quite pricey and they are really nice uh, brushes so um, what I think it was is probably not wetting the brush enough so if you just stick the brush into the water and do your usual kind of swirling like you would do with any brush uh, that that would be enough for those brushes but because of the amount of bristles and how soft they are this brush needs a little bit of um, getting used to okay so I might uh, give this brush a go in this video I'm just checking the time so that's one thing um, let's move on to the next favorites so this one is definitely going into my favorites and then the next thing is I have really enjoyed well I say really enjoyed I only done two but I have really enjoyed those two um, illustrations botanical illustrations but in a quick modern way so what is a modern illustration? You want to um, capture detail of a flower so that you can, uh, you know, look at it and know exactly what flower it is. You can recognize it. Um, but it is modern because we are also busy. We don't have the time. We don't have the hours. We love painting and drawing flowers, however, but we don't, just don't have the time to do it to that uh, photography level so what you want to do is also maybe along the way develop your own style so what I have done here is uh, just um, drawn two different flowers or plants this is an African sage uh, no African basil 
from my kitchen garden. One day we just sat out with Mason uh, and started um, drawing things from the kitchen garden. And then this one is a picture. I think it's a type of geranium. Maybe I'm mistaken. It's a picture from this book, which I'm also putting into my favorites because I absolutely love this book since I bought it. There is just so much. I mean, you could spend an entire, let me just show you a couple of pages. You can spend an entire afternoon, if you ever were so lucky to have that time to yourself, with a cup of coffee and just looking through the photography and because there's so many pictures that are really zoomed in you can see even the water dew the droplets um you could do some fantastic um flower studies so coming back to what's modern is that you want to recognize things but it doesn't have to be necessarily finished so if you look at the african basil I left some of the white of the paper here uh, and the idea here is we captured the color and the shape of the leaves and flowers as they are and then over here same thing some of these petals are not you know entirely painted in but the essential detail is captured this obviously took a little bit longer than something like that because it's just a lot more detailed also drawing it took longer time but I think it gives you a good idea now the pencils I've done it with so this one I've done in my studio at my desk with my fancy pencils uh, this one I have done in the garden like I said with Mason and I felt so happy sharing these pencils and the pencils I'm talking about are these Derv and Chromaflow because I didn't feel precious about them. I didn't feel that, you know, they're going to, I don't know, um, damage if they are in this sitting on a, on a hot, hot summer's day with the sun um, shining onto them. I didn't feel like uh, if if one rolled down and it broke that it would be like you know costing me too much to replace it um, so I just feel less precious with them and I think that allows a certain level of creativity in a more free way um, so I really enjoyed it so this is the 72 tin and I will link um, up here somewhere I think um, the review that I did with all the swatches and things so you can have a look and yeah so I've done that um, here this illustration using the chroma flow Derwent and quite often I just take this uh, set into the garden like I said don't feel precious about it and it invites uh, your children if you have children or if you have um, you know little ones um, around that want to be part of your creative space um, you won't feel precious letting them use these pencils yet these pencils are of a high quality and they are very uh, pigmented and beautifully bright so and the soft they're really soft that's what I like about Chroma Flow they feel quite soft you don't need to push hard sometimes people are put off using colored pencils because they think about the old um, you know, colored pencils that didn't give much pigment, yet you had to really, really uh, put some power into it. So, yeah, really enjoyed it, uh, loved it, and uh, they are definitely in my July favorites. Okay, so I think this is it for my July favorites. Now what I'd like to do is talk about this painting. If you remember, um, I started painting it when did I start painting it? Let me just um, get closer to the painting. All right, so exhibit A. If you remember, is my head in? <laughs> if you remember this picture here, I um, started doing it during, or well, just before the war in Ukraine started, and I had some 
really good ideas about it and also it was I think just sort of like springtime the color palette for me has changed so I no longer feel kind of um, attached to the color palette and also every time I look at this and think I really want to finish it I want to finish it so I can clean up this area take it all down and actually hang it in the all right I hope my head is in now yeah and hang it in a frame and have it displayed but every time I look at it I'm starting to feel like it's a bit overworked I don't connect to the color palette and also um, it kind of feels every time I look at it it reminds me of that time um, when the war started so I kind of feel like I actually want to almost start again maybe slap on some lighter paint or even white or like buff titanium or something like that and just start again but for now I'm going to or I'm planning to take this down and actually leave it until a time when I feel like I can approach this painting again and possibly maybe then I will be happy to just maybe somehow add things and finish it or actually restart the process again but for now I don't want to touch it I don't feel comfortable with that idea so I will start again by using another sheet of paper and then <laughs> I hope, I'm hoping that that process will be faster and I'm also planning to take you on the journey there so in case you wondered what happened to this painting since not much all right so here we go this is the etcher block and i'm going to use my palette knife right here so just insert it run through the bottom to release the paper and put the same on the other side so i'm going to work with that later on tonight i haven't decided exactly what i'm going to do but this is just the first uh, layer of paint Another um, item which I actually should add to my favorites is this palette here. It's by Mrs. Um, Desert Studio. Yeah, Mrs. Desert Studio on Etsy. I have found uh, this shop myself and I haven't heard of it before. And the palettes are just super beautiful artisan palettes. So what I would do is this. I'm just going to show you now how I would use this brush. So here it is completely dry. So what I'm going to do is put in the water. Do you wonder if you can see anything? So I'll just go here. So put it in the water and as you can see when I'm taking taking it out, this is what happens. Like there's still some bristles that are wet and um, dry. So I'm going to go back and now gently pressing the bristles against each other and I'm doing it by swapping the sides just a few times and then again give it a good swirl and the same. I would do this maybe three times and that should be enough. Can you see now how the bristles are coming to touching like they touch each other at the uh, bottom nothing is opening up so that's your sign that your brush is full now if I'm going to take the brush like that of course it's going to be leaking water because it's a mop brush so what you want to do is just push some excess water out of the brush and it'd be looking like that so now I have some residual paint and I believe this was the Chinese orange and I think this one next to it is the brown green uh, and I might add a little bit of the indigo to it. So let's start just by wetting these and mixing them together and get a lovely colour. And then I'm going to neutralize the whole thing by adding some uh, indigo. This is a good way of using up colors that you had 
for a little while. There are two divots here for your brushes as well, which means your brush is not going to roll away. Um, so here is the indigo. Probably need just a very small amount. I don't have any specific color in mind just yet. I just want to use these two up. And then get a bit of this color in. So we're getting some sort of a green now. Quite a rich color here. So let's start with this one for now. So, if you want really vibrant colors with this brush, you need to mix up vibrant colors. If you're going to add too much water and not enough pigment, you're going to have very watery, not so much interesting um, color mixes. So if I wanted something a bit more intense, I would do a bit of this. So you can see how lovely and saturated it is. So I'm, I'm thinking about something abstract here and I might just leave it at that. I could add some more intensity in here. This brush is also good for splatters. Whoa. <laughs> because it's so wet so be careful with it but it does give you a fantastic splatter like no other brush it's also going to be very unpredictable splatter most splatters are unpredictable but this one it is going to be extra unpredictable because it just kind of gushes out of the brush <laughs> so um, yeah, I absolutely love this brush. Again, I had to be quite careful and slow here, uh, but it could be a very dynamic um, flow. If you are working on a larger scale, um, that will make things a lot easier and faster. So yeah, it's, it's a lovely brush. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope you're having a fabulous time, whatever you're doing and enjoying the summer whichever way and i will see you in the next videos so also one more thing um i think i am planning to have my video scheduled for fridays 5 p.m gmt um sometimes they're late so it ends up being on a random day but friday 5 p.m is where i'm aiming and then whatever extra bit of filming if i would do that would be then just squeezed um, on any other day. So at the minute it's going to be quite free flowing because of the summer holidays. Um, and that's it really. So I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.